Hey everybody, this is Craig Garber. Welcome to Everyone Loves Guitar. We've got an awesome guest today with Alex Garcia. He's a super talented guy, very funny, very bright, and just a very kind human being. So I was excited to uh, connect with him. A couple of uh, uh, comments. I want to thank our mutual friend, Jeff Coleman. Jeff, thanks so much for hooking us up. And also, if you are not watching this on YouTube and you're listening to the audio, know that Alex looks like Latin Sammy Hagar. Oh, only with a better fro than Sammy has. <laughs> All right. There we go. Uh, background on Alex. He's originally from Caracas, Venezuela. He studied with Venezuelan jazz pian pianist, even though he's a guitar player, uh, Jerry Weil. He founded the band Clowns, which was a well-known band in the underground rock scene in Venezuela. He became a session guitarist. And he's got a great story about teaching that he'll get into. Uh, and he eventually reached a plateau and moved here to the U.S. looking to advance his career. He moved to Miami, started session work, recording albums for Shakira, Ricky Martin, Julio Iglesias uh, Jr., Cheyenne, amongst loads of other people. Uh, in addition, he's toured and played with Lou Graham from Foreigner, John Payne from Asia featuring uh, John Payne, Steve Auger. How do you pronounce the last name? Ogeri? Oh, Jerry, yeah. Steve Ogeri from Journey. Julio Iglesias, uh, Julio Iglesias Jr., Enrique Iglesias, and others. Basically, the Iglesias have a wing in their house, or Alex has got a wing in his house named after the That's Iglesias family. Right. <laughs> uh, Alex is a member of the house band for the Latin Grammys, as well as the Latin Songwriters Hall of Fame, and he was nominated for Latin Grammys himself as a producer for the Latin icon Ednita Nazario. He's composed music for Discovery Channel TV shows, Matador series, which was a show called El Rey, and TV commercials. And this is so cool. Alex just wrapped up literally the biggest artist tour of 2022 as the touring guitar player for Bad Bunny. So I'm sure he's going to have some interesting stuff. Dude, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. No, thank you, Greg, man. So cool like I said, to. thank you so much. And thank you for the service you're doing for the community, for everyone as guitar player and musicians. So I thank you for all of them. Uh, you're you know? welcome, brother. Yeah. All right. Tell me about growing up in Caracas. It's the capital of Venezuela. It's got a, today yep. a, a population of 2 million. Uh, what was it like growing up there as a kid? And also, the did the economic struggle, struggles of the country is going through today, did that exist back then? Um, not as much as it is now. That's yeah. It's always been a struggle. Um, from my perspective, one of the issues that, that Venezuela has as a country is that you know, like anything, when you rely too much on one thing, and 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 as you know, Venezuela has uh, the biggest uh, oil reservoirs in the world. So yeah. you know, it, it's extremely rich in oil. And um, but but then again, if you don't know how to work with it, because if I'm not mistaken, you you know, Venezuela sends their oil outside to be refined and then gets it back. Oh, I didn't know so, that. Oh yeah, See, it's, so I'm, they, I'm pretty it's... sure. That's the way it works. So, so imagine you don't even know how to work with the product that you have. So yeah. it's always been, and, but but then again, because you have so much of it that you know, sure we can do whatever we want. So it's always been relying too much of that instead of investing in agriculture and tourism and and there's so much stuff over there you can do. Um, you know, minerals. I mean, it's it's crazy. It, it, it's a blessed country with so much stuff that it has that it can offer and, and, and make money out of. But then again, is that mentality, you know, oh, we just yeah. this, it's fine. And, and, you know, so, yeah, to answer your question, it's always been a struggle, um, not as much as it is now. Yeah, know? that's a shame. Basically, it, yeah. But um, back then, uh, you know, having no Internet and, and none of that, it was really hard to learn you, the instrument, any instrument, as a matter of fact, because as, as, as you know, because I'm sure you've heard from, from your guests that back then the way to learn was to go to concerts. And cause I talked to, you know, friends here, you know, like Jeff Coleman, guys like that, you know, Jeff Marshall. And I hear the stories and it's like, Oh yeah, I saw Van Halen in 82 or this and that. Um, although Van Halen went to Venezuela in uh, 81, 82, but I was too young to go to the concert, <laughs> but, but it was very few back then. So, but the point I'm trying to make is that you had none of that, uh, culture, uh, you know, 
that, that that guitar world that you can go to a concert to a bar and then go somebody with a certain level that you go oh my god that's how you do it oh that's that technique that van halen does we had none of that so what it is the only way to learn was to listen to the record and transcribe the stuff to learn it and you know with the vinyl you know it, it was old really school. hard yeah. old school man <laughs> it was really hard so it, it was that with your vinyl, and in my case, was Guitar Player Magazine. And I always be grateful to that magazine because that was my connection to the outside world that I wanted to understand. And, and, and it was really hard because I didn't speak the language then. You know, oh, that's right. They, yeah. So it was in English. They, they didn't it was in English. Oh, no, 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 no. None of the stuff back then. It was, uh, oh. yeah, it was in English. So I literally had to sit down with the dictionary and and just try to understand oh what my, my heroes God. were saying. Oh yeah, that's so work, this, man. Yeah, that oh, was yeah. a job. Oh yeah, when and not only that, <laughs> so because of the situation, whatever. It was really hard to find the magazine. So I would literally go around, uh, you know, the, the, in Caracas, I would go around it and, and the places they used to sell the magazines. I would literally go and make my mom drive me, or I would go and take a taxi, whatever, you know. I would just struggle. And when you find it, the one magazine, it was literally like six months behind. Wow. Oh, yeah. So to my surprise, when I, you know, we'll get into that later. But to my surprise, when I moved to the U.S., <laughs> I walk into a 7-Eleven and I see the magazine. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is so easy. And then I, I'm like, you can subscribe and it will get delivered to your house. I'm like. Oh my God, this is so easy. But this is, this is great because this is, people don't realize how lucky we are here. Oh yeah. If you Absolutely. haven't traveled or have conversations like this, yeah. getting people take subscription magazines, nobody even gives it a second thought, but here you are, yeah. you're like, wow, you deliver this? Wow. I mean, yeah. that's really a cool story, man. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. I will make my friends drive. They will go crazy. I'm like, let's go to this other place. I'm like, we're driving another 15, 20 minutes. Oh, they don't have, let's go to the, I, it was, it was for me, it was really an obsession because I yeah. wanted to understand because, dude, I was hearing all this stuff and, and, and I'm like, I needed to understand what was going on because learning from records, although I did, it was really hard, you know, it was struggle and, I was trying to make it easy on myself. Oh, this is how you do it, you know, but, you know, so, yeah, Amazing, it was really man. hard, but, but it was, it was cool. It gave me a lot of strength and uh, patience and, and all the good things that I learned back then. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I, I give you credit. That's a lot of commitment. No, thank you, man. Well, you know, it was, it was wonderful in a way, but then again, it was also sometimes tiring because you wanted to just play your guitar and, and, and make it easy on yourself. And, I think it's a wonderful thing for kids nowadays. They have the information so easy. But then again, you have other results by having stuff so easy. Yeah, know? of course. And, and the outcome plays... is it's a bit different, you know, so. Yeah, nobody plays rhythm guitar either. <laughs> Everybody's exactly. so obsessed with like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, again, because having so much information, they get so good so fast. But it, mm -hmm. it's like repeating something that you're reading, right? It's like, blah, 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 yeah, you know, whatever it is. And, but then again, what is it that you're reading about? Oh, uh, I don't know. You know, so musically speaking, I think we're losing some of the depth the meaning of music, the emotional content, because again, not speaking the language and, 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 and not knowing about music because I consider my, myself a music fan first. So for me, music grabbed me since I can remember. And it was not because, oh, this is a nice chord progression or he's playing this lick. It was, or he's saying this, it was none of that. It was the emotional content the, that grabbed yeah, me. The feeling right in your heart. The yeah. feeling. And, and, and we're, we're missing some of that. It's yeah, I would agree with that. It, it's, it's so easy to do nowadays that you, you forget what you're reading about, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. It's, my, it's my humble opinion. I could be wrong, but, you know. That's, I think that's everybody over, you know, like 45 <laughs> kind yeah. of feels the same way, to be honest yep. with you. Yep, yep, yeah. Uh, so I know from our first conversation that we had, month ago or whenever that you like to rock out. Yep. So I was curious, how did you develop your rock chops having Jerry Weil, who is a jazz pianist, 
as your teacher? Like, how did you even play, learn to play guitar from him if he's a pianist? Well, it was, it was interesting because, again, not having access to a lot of information back then, uh, I would do research like I always do to this day. I, I'm one of those guys. If I'm going to do something, I read about it. And, yeah. and, and so and ask people, you know, I tried to get information. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm trying to learn from this guy. So I will look and listen to the players. I'm like, uh, you know what? I'll do respect. That's not what I was looking for. And, and then, you know, I, I will see how they would do lessons. I actually went to a couple of schools back then. And then it was not for me. It was, I mean, at some point it was one school to specialize in jazz. And I went to as a listener because I, I wanted to learn about music. And the, 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 the lesson I went to, the teacher um, female, uh, and, and by the way, great pianist, but, um, uh, you know, she was like, basically she was telling my friend, it's like they, they needed to do some kind of transcription or something. So they did like a, I don't know, like Eric Clapton solo transcription or something. And she literally went ballistic, like, oh, this is garbage. I don't know what you should be doing West Montgomery or, you know, whatever, Miles Davis or whatever, you know, and I'm like, I never saw the difference in music. Like to me, music was music. Music yeah. is good music and bad music. Like, and, 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 you know, if I was hanging with my rock friends, I was never like, oh no, the police. Like I loved the police back then because I'm the youngest of my brothers and sister. And they were listening to that stuff. And for me, it was amazing. You too, it is amazing. The Cure, what all those things, you know, and, and I never saw a difference. So anyway, right. I, I went to to the to the class and she when she started doing that I'm like I'm not gonna go here I'm not gonna spend my money doing this so finally I found about Yeri and then Yeri was sweetheart of a guy I mean totally opposite from what I saw super patient um, on top of that he was coming from he's originally from Austria and he, so he studied in a conservatory he did all the classical training. And then on top of that, he was getting into jazz and his best friend, one of his best friends was Joe Sawinul, you know? <laughs> yep. So, so, you know, you had that in influence. And uh, so he came to Venezuela and I started to study with him. So he brought all those influences and basically I studied with him for five years. So That's all a that long stuff with time. theory, oh yeah, yeah, theory. So, and to answer your question, it's a and long answer, but basically because he's a pianist, um, I would, see and hear what he was doing and I will record the lessons and I will bring them back home and I will transcribe stuff to the guitar by by ear or so, by understanding the music you know that so that was phenomenal ear training for you for, yeah oh yeah, for absolutely. yeah. And, and you know and, and because it's a lesson he's not doing all the fast stuff he's just doing okay so this is a two five one so this is the minor this is the dominant this is the one chord major or it's, it's minor, or whatever so he will say all those things and i'm i'm hearing it i'm like okay but he also will give you a chart so i will listen to it and i will see it on paper and i will see the notes and what it is, you know, once you understand where all the notes are in the guitar, you can, you know, adapt to that. Again, funny thing, I'm like, oh, but this is a, a C major try on a piano. <laughs> this, this is an extension of the guitar. Oh, but if I move this knot here and they, oh, this is the bar chord thing, you know? Right. So yeah. it, you start like making up stuff for yourself which again because you go deeper into this stuff by oh if they say this is a c major with a bar chord right and whatever is that position but why is it a c major oh because you have the root here here's the fifth then you have another root here here's the third then a fifth and another you know you yeah. see all the notes and but that's not the way i learned i learned by okay this is a c major it's c major because it has c e g Right. Okay, that's a try. All that stuff, whatever. But I'm trying to tell you how I saw those things back then. And I will translate all that to the guitar on my own. Like I never had a guitar teacher. I will basically, it was basically Jerry, a piano player, and then records. That's how I learned. Were your lessons with him in Spanish or English? Spanish. Thank God for that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. I must have been a breeze. Although he's, he speaks English, of course, but um, but yeah. Yeah, would give him in, in, in Spanish. Great teacher. I mean, he he's he's been. I think he's eighty something now. He's still there giving guitar lessons. And at some back then, 
he was so funny because he was into surfing and we have great ways in Venezuela and stuff. And he was just like, Alex, I'm, yeah, I'm Friday after the last time I'm going to this beach and I'm, on Saturday I'm going to surf. So he we used to surf back then. And his his kid became one of like a champion or something surfing. It's, surfing, it's a cool surf. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah super nice. That's what, I, mean, I mean, the reason I mention it's because having this guy is serious about jazz and classical. He was so cool then, still is that he will tell you, "Oh, Saturday I'm going to go surf." You know, yeah. it's so out of context guy, that you wouldn't be expecting. Correct. Yeah, that to me yeah. was a great lesson in everything. You know. Yeah, so. that's funny. Man, yeah. I had a funny story. I was a, an old friend of mine. I've known this guy 42 years. And uh, he's just my buddy. We grew up together and we went to school together for a couple of years. And he was in town. He came to visit. So, I don't know, Friday night, I, I wanted to meet my daughter. He hadn't met her yet. And um, she's, a, she's a night owl. So, it was like midnight. We were just coming back. We went out for a couple of drinks. And she said, hey, Dad, stop by. I'm like, okay. So, we're talking. And she asks, she pulls out something and, and she didn't know what it was, some sort of like, uh, I don't know, some medical thing. And I said, oh, oh, ask Louis, he's a doctor. And she's like, it, and it was so out of, con she's not expecting me to hang out. My buddy, we were just out drinking is a doctor. It was really funny out of context. It just made me think of yeah. that. And you said that I've never seen her like, it's just, oh, that's really interesting. I have a bunch of he says, I have a bunch of questions for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it was just, Absolutely. sorry, man. It's just, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It, 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 that's how it is, man. You, you'd be surprised how certain people, but again, I think the beauty of it is that we tend to generalize about certain things. And yes, when you learn that, yes, yeah, sometimes that's true. I'm not saying it's not, but sometimes you will get surprised by those kind of situations, you know? Very much, very yeah. much, man. Yeah. How did you get uh, sessions going in Venezuela? And what were some of the challenges back then as far as getting things moving? To be perfectly honest, it was not that hard because it's a small country. It's a small place, Caracas. And word of mouth back then, you know, that's how it is. So, you know, I was that kid that, you know, uh, learning to play all the hard stuff, whatever. And, and, you know, I would start playing in bars and people will hear about me and, and being a guitar teacher with so many students I used to have, um, one of them especially was, um, refer me to his dad and his dad, one of the main producers back then. Oh, okay. and so, and so like I said, it was not that hard. It's like, oh, dad, you should hear this, this, my teacher, you know, it's like, oh, really bring it. And I were literally, I was a kid, I would bring my hand and I was like, I didn't know what session world was. He's like, oh, I didn't, I, mean, I was learning with, with Jerry to, to learn to read, how to, how to read music and all that. But I was, I wasn't a good reader back then. I'm, I'm still, you know, not the greatest reader, but I, now it's a different story. But anyway. Um, he will put the charts. I'm like, uh, let me listen to it. Cause I have, you know, I have a pretty good ear and I'm like, okay, so what do you want me to play? Yeah, there's some power chords and do, uh, they will guide me. Cause I, I didn't know. And that right. back then that's how it used to be. Uh, play a solo. Okay. Here. Oh, thank you. Here's your money. I, I didn't know what session world was. I literally didn't know, but I was brought in, you know, and I did a few records just like I literally will show up with my amp, you know? And I have a dear friend and who's a great producer, mix and engineer. Um, he, he's here. And, and uh, we met, he met, we met a long time ago and we met when I was a kid and he laughed because I'm like, here's Alex with this tiny M, you know, <laughs> with a couple of guitars. I'm like, who the hell is this kid? You know, I'm like, oh, that's going to sound like crap, you know? And then he's like, but that sounds great. <laughs> you know, that's good. So I, so it was one of those situations. So, it wasn't that hard and it was kind of by default. Yeah. How I got into the session world over there. So you mentioned that yeah. you were giving lessons and we talked yep. earlier. Tell my, tell the listeners how many students you had. 60, six, <laughs> zero. In person, in yeah, person. In person. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's... It's uh, again, you know, back then people will look to, to learn from, I mean, I wish I was one of those guys that that will, you know, I wish I had myself as a teacher, meaning yeah. 
I that, get that. that we we didn't we didn't have a lot of uh, people back then that will show you how to do stuff because you know at the time I'm like so what Van Halen is doing here so what is it that Randy Rose or Alan Holsworth or Joan Schofield you know or Scott Henderson or Chick Corea I mean I wanted to learn but nobody gave me that type of information or knew how huh. to give it so I, I started to be that guy for my students you know so it's like hey do you know how to play this solo for for Michael Schenker, whatever it was they will bring to me? I'm like, sure, you know, or I, or I will learn it from them and I will show sure. it to them and I will try to explain why they were playing those notes or what was what was tonality and all those concepts. And uh, so, you know, pretty soon I, I I became the guy for guitar. There was another guy who was amazing player also but we were like basically two guys that people would say in hey, it's either this guy in caracas or that yeah and that's awesome that's what, man. yeah i had that many students yeah uh how old were you when you just what what prompted you to move to the states and how old were you at that time well it, get, it got to a point basically of you know the ceiling the ceiling i just hit the ceiling and i was like okay now, and ironically, I moved before the whole new government thing with Chavez and all that happened. Because some people say, well, things happen. But I saw it as a different thing for me. It was my career. And I, and I, and I, I disagree with things that were happening. Like I said, when you asked me the first question, yeah, it was still a thing where I'm like, I disagree with, uh, with how things are get, getting done here. So I'm like, I need to move to a better place. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to live here in the U.S. Um, because I live here with, with when I was a kid, I was like five years old when I live here. In, I, we live in Washington, D.C. because my dad was a doctor and he was working in the hospital. And, uh, and Oh, I didn't know that. Whatever. Okay. So, it, yeah, yeah. So he left a, a big, I'm, I'm sorry, being here left a big impression in myself about I like it. Somehow, even as a kid, I was like, I like it here. It felt like I belong here. And 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 all those things, you know, when you add them together, I'm like, there, there, I need to go. And because I reach a plateau, I, I was like, I hit the ceiling. I'm like, uh, at the time I recorded with the, the biggest artists, I've done plenty of session work. I, I was playing, if I wanted to, I was playing seven nights a week. Right. Easily. And, 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 and I was giving like six six days a week guitar lessons so i was it's not that i was struggling or anything i was looking for the next day and um so i moved and i think i was 22 23 years old when i moved oh, here I, and did you have any any contacts here uh one of my best friends lived here so i stayed with him um for a little bit. This is this is an interesting story I'm about to tell you. When I moved here, I stayed with him, so I had that was my plan. So it's it's interesting and sad because it's it's a very sad story. But this is how you have to keep going. You know, you need to think about okay, this happened. I need to move on. I moved here and literally two months after moving here and staying with my friend, he was married. He had a kid then. So it was a, you know, just something to, I can go somewhere else. But two months later after I moved here, his wife died in a car accident. Oh my God. So all the stuff that I had planned crumbled down. Oh, so sorry, I had man. to oh. start again and okay, now what? And this is in day. This is in Miami. Uh, yes, actually, Pompano Beach. Pompano Pompano, Beach, to yeah. be more precise. Yeah, to be more yeah. precise. So um, I had to basically come up with something. So I had to accelerate what I was trying to do. And again, I was now what? Okay, let me get a job. Okay, uh, let me start. Uh, back then, you will have auditions. You know, the newspaper or the musical newspaper will have auditions. You you will go to auditions and. Uh, I got I got one. I basically got one, and with a top forty band, and um, uh, they used to travel a lot, and uh, basically around the region or just around no the around the U.S. around the oh, U.S. Okay. So my first gig, I landed like like four or five months after moving here, was with top forty band, and I went to Guam. 
<laughs> of all places. Oh my God. You yeah. come to the States and you go to Guam. Wow. Yeah. No, but it was great because we stayed in a hotel for like two months, had a great experience. And again, it was a new world for me. This is all great, you know, and... Uh, How was your you English know? then? Uh, you know, I was struggling. I, I, I yeah. did understand it because, you know, again started to read back then guitar player magazine and all this stuff um i started to learn uh but you know I, you know how it is i i think when you know a language is when you don't have to think about what you're gonna yeah. say you know you well, think, in south florida it doesn't matter that's the problem right? you can get exactly. you can get a, you don't ever have to speak english if you don't oh, want absolutely. to 100 I mean, but i love the, I, I love the fact that i think from Let's say Brower going on forward, like north. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, back then you will have to speak. No, English. you had to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, north, had to speak. North, north of like Dade, you need. Oh English. no, <laughs> south of Brower, you can speak whatever you want. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> man. And they will understand it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. So, all right, so you get this yeah. gig. You're in Guam with the top forty yep. band. Yep. What happened next? Oh, the same thing. I mean. I, I started playing with different top 40 bands. And again, words would spread around. People, people would recommend you. And uh, same thing. I started doing, I found this friend of mine. Um, his name is Iker Gassam. He's a great engineer, amazing producer, engineer, Grammy winner, whatever. And uh, he started, oh, so we got connected again. It's like, you're here. Right here. He's like, hey, you want to do a session? I'm like, sure. And that's how and I that started. that was your again. entry. That was wow. my entry to session work. I mean, obviously, I spent like uh, three, four years doing top 40 stuff. But it was a great education because yeah. it's something interesting about that, that coming from a different country, again, back then, having no access to much information, you would think, oh, I speak pretty decent English. Guess what? When you come and speak to an American person, you don't. And same uh, thing, what I'm about to say, musically speaking, it's the same thing. I thought I knew how to play funk. I thought I knew how to play jazz. I thought they said, hey, none of that. Once I, once I was hanging with the real guys, I realized I didn't. So, but it was a humbling experience. So it was a great education for you musically. A hundred percent, because mm -hmm. the top 40 uh era let's say it gave me the opportunity to to find to myself about what what i was doing right and what i was doing wrong so right um so yeah it was a great education and uh and it gave me perspective on a lot of things and you know because i started doing sessions and i was coming from the world of uh, you know alex garcia the guy i knew was giving guitar lessons yeah Alex, let's do a solo oh <laughs> yeah uh, no, that's not quite what we're looking for, you know. So okay. you learned. So, so I think, oh, they, no, that's not quite what we're looking for. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That, that it was about to play for the songs, to play the right parts, to be on, you know, to pay with a nice groove, you know, be in sync with the tempo, not, not you know, running fast or, or, or do, dragging too much the tempo. All those things I learned by doing sessions here. Yeah. You know, and it was a great, great education. Did you ever work with a guy named Benny Facconi? Uh, He's an engineer producer in LA. All he does is Latin artists. Yes. Yeah, well, check this out. He has uh, this. This is how, how the business, the music business nowadays. I haven't worked with him directly, but he has mixed records that I recorded him. Okay, you, know? you send in tunes then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You send yeah. in your parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it is nowadays. Yeah. Um. Okay, so then from Miami, then you got gigs pretty consistently in LA as well. Yeah. Well, you know what it is. Um, you know, you work with producers, and they will fly you sometimes to LA. You know. And uh, so that's how I started. And again, same thing. You know, you start meeting people and they recommend you and, and that's how you got the other gigs. But yeah. but mainly it's been um, as a session guitar player, 
I have to say my, my bread and butter has been the, the, the Latin music industry. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, although I recorded with, uh, Sam Moore, I did his From Sam and Dave. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I What'd recorded on his, his What'd latest record. I did. I hear that's so cool. How'd you Get, use same thing referral? Same thing. The producer yeah. knew me, Alex, yeah. come on. We did it live. It was great. Um, as, uh, that's one of the American, few American things. I, I worked with one of the, the kids from new kids in the block, Danny Wood also. Mm -hmm. Um, so things like that, I mean, I've done a few American projects, but again, my, my main, the bread and butter, it's, is the Latin music stuff. I, I forgot to, I wanted to ask you a question. When you moved here, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ambition and uh, drive to do that. You know, you're 22 years old. You're like, well, I'm going to go to another country that takes a lot of balls. Where did that come from? Or where do you think, think that came from? Uh, um, I think it, it came from having to rely on myself because uh, my dad, who was a great man, uh, it was very old school and strict at the fact he was a doctor. And basically when I graduated from high school, he said, if you want to study a decent career, I'll pay for it. I'll give you a car, whatever you need. If you want to do music, you're on your own. <laughs> and I think it comes from that, <laughs> you know, I, I've been on my own since then. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it comes from, okay, this is, this is it. This is the ceiling. I want to yeah. do other stuff. So I have to keep going. It's the same thing. I think it's the same thing that happened when my friend's wife passed away. I mean, imagine I'm just getting to the country learning and I have this plan to, let's say, be here for six months to a year. You know, with my friend, and we're probably going to do a band and all this stuff. And then those plans were gone in a second. How did and that ever work to... out for your friend? Was he okay? I mean, that's I can't. Well, he that's went a back tragedy. to Venezuela. Oh, yeah, no, he oh, went back God. to Venezuela because he was it was really hard on him. And oh. he had a kid. They just had a kid. Yeah. So he went to Venezuela, and and uh, then he moved back here again because of all the political situation. But but yeah, that's how he survived. You know, mm. and uh, he's doing great now. So good. Um. But yeah, basically, I think it comes from that point of, okay, I'm on my own. Yeah. I need to survive. So I'm I, I, like, I literally, I'm not afraid to fail because I fail, I failed many times, but I, I have to keep going because yeah. of that situation, you know? Yeah. Good for you, man. I like that. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, let's talk about some of the artists you've worked with. If you could tell me how you first wound up connecting with them and any kind of cool or interesting story about work with him. Let's talk about Julio Iglesias first. Julio uh, came recommend by uh, another dear friend, uh, Lee Levin, who's uh, one of the main session uh, players here, drummer. He's a drummer. He's also, he was also the drummer for Bad Bunny. <laughs> yeah, Dude, musical that's director. Awesome how that works? Oh, he was an MD. I know, uh, you got the hook yeah, up no, there. Absolutely. That's awesome. and, and, yeah. and another dear friend of mine who, sadly passed away amazing guitar player dan warner no, um no, that's, he's he no. was the guy and he was he was one of my dearest friends too here Sorry, man. he worked we worked with julio yeah um sad story but wonderful guy amazing musician so anyway you know imagine julio calling calling his two main guys right so dan and lee and, and they say hey i need a guitar player and they both say they both, my name yeah so, that's, so i was like you know, getting See, in with fine awesome. colors. So yeah, it's like, oh, that's so, awesome. so that's how I started working with him. So both of my friends recommend me, and that's how I got the gig. And, Any cool uh, stories? I mean, with Julio, you have so many stories. I mean, first of all, I uh, I love wine, and, <laughs> and Julio is the expert. I have to say, <laughs> that guy knows about wine, and, uh, you know, I would, I will try to fool him, you know, to see, you know, I'm being smart ass. I'm like, okay, let's see if he knows this, this stuff for real. And I will bring like a cheap bottle of wine. I will pour it, you know, and I will try to, Hey, who check this out? I bought this and I paid, I don't know, $500 for it. Just that's a joke. Yeah. yeah. He would go, oh, this is <laughs> what are you giving me? You know? <laughs> so, so, so that was a good lesson because he truly knew about wine and um, That's funny. he's a character, man. He's a wonderful man. And, and you know, with, with many artists, the fact that 
you know, they have a, their way of doing things because, again, you have to understand as a human being that when when you get always yes for an answer, that always changes you. And that's, that, that's a fact. So I don't blame them for being uh, a little uh, weird or, or do certain things that people go, oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, I just laugh about it. But um, right. with Julio, um, you know, he's – He's a passionate guy and he would, you know, he will tell me, Alex, I do this for love. Music <laughs> meaning. I, ma I make a living doing other things, you know. <laughs> so oh he's a character, God. man, and a wonderful guy. Yeah, so. That's yeah. cool, man. Uh, Lou Graham. Lou. Lou, well, he's, he's, um, He's a hero of mine. I mean, ironically, with Julio, it, we could say he was a hero, but more on my mom's side, hero. Like, I literally, you know, he would he would call songs, going back a little bit, he would call songs, say, you guys know this song? And I'm like, pretty bad with titles for some reason. You know, if you say a song, I'm like, I have to think of it. But as soon as I hear it, I go, oh, yeah, of course. And then they will start playing. So I'm like, I know that song. Oh, because cause your mom, mom used to listen to that's yeah, funny. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so with Lou, on the other hand, it was my brothers. So it was more of a connection. I was fully aware of the songs, the repertoire, the caliber of, of singer that he is. You know, he's he's for me easily top five uh, greatest rock singers ever. Yeah, you know, great voice. For me. And. Um, you know, wonderful guy. I mean, at this point in life, you know, he's super laid back and there's no, there's none of the wild stories that sometimes people hear. Um, super laid back guy, the nicest guy ever. He's like, Alex, do your thing. It's none of the drama that sometimes occurs that with certain artists that they're like, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that, and you know, you you feel the pressure of, you know, of oh, this is a job more than than anything else because there's yeah. certain guidelines and with lose like man just do your thing and have fun that's and great to have that from one of your heroes uh, means the world to me that he has that trust in me that he's like do it man do your thing it's not no no none of that oh you're missing this bit here or uh, if i if i took a little bit of a liberty playing a little bit of a different solo he would never complain he actually will say man that was cool man i loved it you know? Oh, he doesn't expect you to play to the record or anything like I that. I mean, I do, but I mean, to me, I, I one of the things I love about music that it's the the moment. Yeah. How spontaneous we can be as humans, because you know, if we do this interview tomorrow, it's going to be a different interview. Right. And if we Absolutely. do it a week from now, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not to. So by having a little bit of, I mean, obviously people. They're expecting to hear the souls from the records, and I do for the most part. But maybe there's a day that I was not feeling exactly like that, or a few that you know, and I will change a few things here and there. I mean, I think, and people, I'm, I'm convinced that people will feel that and they will accept. It. You know, like if you as a listener, you go, Absolutely. "Oh, that was not quite the soul, but that was cool," or. Oh, that wasn't so cool. Let's see the next time what happens. Because, yes, yeah, sometimes we can do things that are not right. But yeah. then there's always the next time to do it right. You right. Know? So yeah. that's so how I of... see it. So Lou, wonderful man, uh, super laid back and, and love working with him. How did you hook up with him? Uh, through Jeff Coleman. Oh, interesting. Because, Jeff, because Jeff had that gig? Well, what it is is so – there was the gig, which, I, you know, I'm confused with the names because they changed the name. They used to be, um, I think it was called uh, buh, 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 The Rock Pack. That's what it used to be called. Okay. So they have some issues with the name. So The Rock, the concept was, and Jeff was the guitar player for that. So it was Lou Graham, um, uh, Steve Algeri. Mm-hmm. John Payne from Asia, who's also the main guy in all this, um, a, a dear friend of mine, too. Love that guy. Wonderful guy, too. Anyway, um, so Jeff recommended me to that gig, you know, 
and, and I started doing the gig. Then, you know, they changed names and each one was. So Lou started doing shows on his own. And so he knew me from that gig, from that experience. So he called me oh, for that, cool. for the, for, to do his band. That's, That's nice. how I got to play. Yeah, yeah. So, so That's, that's... again, word of mouth. You know, it's like you work yeah. with people. Oh, hey, I remember. Let's call Alex, and he called me for his band. So that's, that's how I got the gig with Lou. When you get a phone call like that. Oh yes, well yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes my day. Anytime anybody remembers me for whatever I did, it makes my day because that's one thing that I that I've learned with with my friends and 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 the guys that do this for a living. It's like it doesn't matter who you are. If you're paying me, if you're hiring me to do a job, I will give you. My hundred percent, you know, mm. it's not because you're a nobody or, or you don't have a name. Oh, he's going to treat me different. I, I completely disagree with that. Yeah, and even, I, yeah. I, I mean, forget about the money issue, whatever. It's just as a human being. Well, it's I, about I you. It, it's yeah, not, it's, correct. you know, it's your, it's what you think of yourself. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 uh, um, you're, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your uh, pride of ownership in what you do. You, have, you know, you want to deliver it a certain way, yeah. Regardless of the money, because then it's a reflection of you. Yeah, yeah, I, totally. I totally get you on that, man. I totally yep. get you. Yeah. Uh, and bet had you okay? I have a bunch of questions about this gig, but ha, just tell me <laughs> how how did you get hooked up with Bad Bunny, Lee Levin, Saint, oh, the, the MD, the drummer, wow. the MD, yeah. Um, with Lee, um. Basically, they call him. The story is, they call him, and uh, you know, because he had some issues with other bands, didn't work out. So, um, you know, which I'm sure, you know, with artists that big, you need to make sure that you're gonna have what you need for for your show. So they wanted to audition the band, but it was a short notice, whatever. But the funny thing is, Lee goes. Uh, I think we can do the audition, but in a different way. Because it's like, we're the band for the Latin Grammys, and Bad Bunny's going to be there. Oh, okay. So there's the audition. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Play. Let's see how he feels with us, basically. And he played with us, loved it, got the gig. Right. Uh, he's, a that, young, that, he's a young kid, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's like 26, if not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. All right. So questions about this, a gig of that magnitude, did you, do you have to prepare differently for it either because, you know, the size of the stadiums or the nature of the performances, you know, the theatrics, how does the, the rehearsals for that go or your preparation for that? Um, I, to be honest, I, I have this thing. It's going to sound funny. I don't get nervous when I do gigs of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. I get nervous when I'm at a place like the baked potato in LA playing with Jeff. I've heard have, this so, is very consistent with what you're yeah. saying. I have heard this is very consistent amongst yeah. the good players. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it, you, it, they, you, yeah, cause no, when you're in the baked potato, you got this guy, three seats and he's yeah. looking at you and you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, and it's so many amazing musicians. Like, man, yeah. I gotta, I gotta have this together right now. You know, that's the second <laughs> chance, you know, yeah. over there is like, man, if I do a tiny mistake, I don't think anybody's going to notice it, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and at the end of the day, they're, they're there to see the artist, which is something right. that you need to understand with all this stuff. It's not about me. And, and that takes the pressure of you 100%. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me. But, but having said that, you know, Bunny was super cool that, you know, at some point we were like jamming, you know, uh, on a sound check. And, and, and he comes and uh, says, hey, what well, you guys don't play like that in the show? We're like, dude, it's your show. And he's like, no, 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 play like that. As a matter of fact, Alex, come come with me on stage, you know, and jam and whatever, you know. And that's, that's how it was. That's pretty cool. Yeah, super that's cool, super really nice. Cool. So, so you know, with all these gigs, and a, a, he's a super, super relaxed guy. Sometimes all the gigs require more more of a choreography that you have to be in a certain position and all those stuff and you know big big gigs require that and i'm fine with that and and i've done it but since you're asking me about this gig i have to say he's a super relaxed guy 
And he's like, again, do your thing. That's great. What do you got? Yeah. Do you call him Bunny? What, is that what you call him? No. What do you call him? His, his name, Benny. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. That's, that's what name. I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or or Benny. You know, yeah, like the right. short. Yep. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. What was yeah. the the Yankee Stadium gig like? Because I know. You know, being in New York, I try to follow things in New York, and I know that was like Jesus uh, coming to town. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> every every gig. I mean, I have to say again, not just that gig. Any gig when you do an outdoor venue like that is it's it's massive. It, yeah. it's, but you lose perspective. It's like going to a movie or something. It's like literally like watching you right now on the screen. You know, really, you could, be, you could be a giant and I don't get the perspective that you're a giant. You're, I don't know, you know, a hundred feet tall, whatever, you know, yeah. I, I would not get that from having you here. So it's the same thing. It's like a movie. So you see a sea of people. That's yeah. it. So That's any it. gig like that with, even with all the artists, I mean, to say, I remember playing with, uh, Cheyenne and Mark Anthony at this, uh, place called Socalo which is like a big pl plaza in Mexico. It's like one of, dude, it was like 120,000 people. Whole, yeah. Wow. So, and same thing. Insane. So it was massive, but but again, it was the same thing. It's like sea of people, that's it. Yeah, it, it, wow. You lose perspective. And so, and again, because it's not about you and all this stuff, dude, I literally don't have any pressure. I just yeah. have the pressure of okay. I need to remember songs and play play the show and make the artist look good because that's my job. Yeah, and it's not about me. So to be perfectly honest, it's not so much pressure. Not because that I, much pressure. I get way more pressure on a gig like that, the baked potato or the club dates that my friends are there to see me. You know, I get more pressure that way for sure. I understand that. I really do. Yeah. yeah. What did you get anything out of that experience? Like. A, just a big scale concert like that, either personally or career wise. Not really, because it's a different thing for me. Um, the, the one thing, like I said, it's that you always learn from anybody you work with. There's always a lesson. If you're looking, if you look for it, you, there's an, an answer for for something you're looking for. You know, I have to say with him, uh, you know, you can you can say that. You don't like his music. We can argue about all those things, you know. But what I saw was a guy that knew what his audience wanted. Right. You know, and and I respect that, you know, because some, sometimes, you know, you need to understand what the audience is looking for. You can argue if it's right or wrong. Sure. Yeah, right. That, that's, not, right. that's not the issue here. But yeah. the fact to see a body who's uh, somebody that's so in tune with what his audience wants is pretty amazing. Because, he... dude, dude, I mean, I mean. To see that, that was the part that I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. They truly love this guy, yeah. you know? Because sometimes with our artists, you know, our audience loves a guy always, but it's more like chill, you know, it's not as crazy. With him, it was insanity. People went yeah. crazy for that. And, of course, the audience was a much younger audience. I'm, I'm going to say average was like 15, 25. Oh, Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. He sounds yeah. like he's reasonably together, mature for a young kid to be handling all this stuff. I think so. I, I yeah. mean, like I said, I I didn't know what to expect, and you know, sometimes with artists, you could say, "Oh man, they're they're crazy because they're artists and they have all this fame and fortune." That you go, "Oh yeah," because I've dealt with some crazies too. But you know, he was super chill, laid back. I mean, for an artist of that caliber. Yeah, Super and relaxed. to be that young, yeah. Oh yes, it, it yeah. Sounds like very. Yeah, and 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 one of the things that you'd be surprised, he's traveled. He, I'm sorry, his his parents travel a lot with him a lot. Oh, okay. So, so there it is. Latin you know, family. He doesn't want to mess up because he's going to come in and mom. Correct. Be, correct. You know, all over. <laughs> yeah. So so you know that's he's really a family guy. It's almost I mean, we like will, a good control to have that. Oh yeah, I mean, like they keep I them mean, together. The fact is that sometimes we would go after the concerts because we're waiting for the tour bus, whatever, and all the stuff, and we would play dominoes. You know, that's so funny. He would sit down, he would sit down with us. I mean, it was none of the drama thing sometimes with or the artists might have. 
Right. That's what I'm saying. The fact that you can be so big and chill at the same time. That's really so, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that it was cool to be there. Alex, tell me the top three musical experiences you've had and what made them so special. Mm, I mean, honestly, there were so many of them. Um, I'm going to say any time that I've done something like me in charge, let, let's say the, uh, when I scored the, the Matador series, stuff like that, I basically mostly did on my own. Um, and people go, oh man, this is cool. You know, cause we, you know, we all have certain insecurities, you know, and, 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 and I'm, I'm guilty to have the, the imposter syndrome, <laughs> you know, every that, musician, every, yeah, every guy yeah. I talk to guy and gal, everybody I speak to feels like, yeah. So, so, you know, to, to, for somebody to accept what you're doing, especially on your own, cause you know, when you have a team of people, it's, it's that you always think like, oh, it's because of them, not because of me that people like this stuff. But when you're in charge and people go, oh man, that was cool. You go, oh man, you're like, that's, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, are you sure? <laughs> but, but that's, that's what it is. I mean, a anytime that I've had one of those experiences musically, um, like I said, I mean, anytime I play with, uh, Lou Graham or, uh, again, because not to make a difference from any of the other gigs that I've done, it's because I grew up listening to his Oh, he's an idol of yours. Yeah. yeah. No, so, I totally so, I get mean, that. I mean, I adore and respect all the artists that I work with, and it's always a pleasure to work with them. But you have to understand that's the music I grew up listening to. It doesn't have to do anything with the quality of the music. I, You know, it's like, you know, it's like sometimes if you grew up on – I don't know, pancakes, you know, and, and somebody goes, oh, but I have uh, scrambled eggs for, for breakfast. And, and, you know, if you grew up eating pancakes, that's what you're going to love, not yeah, scrambled right. eggs, you know. So it has to do with, with that. It's your preference. It does, the it's nostalgia not of, right, of your – Right, correct. Yeah. Exactly. I've, I've had that on the show when I've had a, people on here that have already moved me musically. I mean, I've had a few guests. I'm like, how the hell is this possible I'm talking to this person? Yeah. Like you think of the first time you're sitting Correct. in your bedroom listening and you're like, right. why am I having a conversation? This is like really right. bizarre. Yeah. Right. I know exactly. It's so very so cool. those experiences, I have to say the fact that I'm doing this stuff, you know, I pinch myself because of that, because yeah. of, I'm like, what? I'm playing with this guy right now, you know, or, or, or I did this. So any of those experiences, again, if you go back to Venezuela, Caracas, uh, right? You're sitting there trying obstacles, to, you know, you know, KSS because it's in English, <laughs> and right, you're like, exactly. and you think back to like I couldn't yeah. read the magazine, and now you're standing right. on stage. Yeah, right. I could, that's cool. I, I think you know it's stuff like that. I mean, I mean, musically, we can say um, stuff like you know. I remember again. This is an interesting story because what it it ties together a few things back in venezuela my first magazine now you know how hard it was to get it and all that my first guitar player magazine was june of 86 if i'm not mistaken june or july now time flies but it's going to be one of the two you can you can look for it if you want to june or july i'm pretty sure it's june of 86 it had it's it said on the magazine who is eric johnson and why is he in our cover <laughs> Back then, the magazine had little flip the uh, vinyl things that you yeah. would play a song or two, and there was Cliff of Dover, you know, the the famous song now, incredible and, song, uh, yeah. yeah. And again, Eric's been a huge influence and in, and in all that. But fast forward to now, Eric's a, it, it's a friend of mine, you know. So, you know, the fact that to be able to speak to guys like that and, and, and other guys. I mean, the fact is that, you know, I, I was, I will, like I said, I treasure more this type of relationships like John Sur, who is, who makes the Sur guitars is another dear friend of mine that I adore the whole family. They're like family, literally 
family to me. I adore those guys, everyone there. So the fact to have a, a relationship with guys that I admire and then I saw from the outside, because, you know, again, John Sura knew about uh, because, you know, he was doing all the guitars for Mark Knopfler, Peter Franzen and all these guys. So, you know, you knew the guitars, you know, yeah. I always been a gearhead, you know, and, and again, being able to have the connection that I have now is it because it's not for me, it's not you could be Michael Jackson or a bad bunny. Right. But but if you don't have the the human quality about yourself, how you handle yourself, yeah. it doesn't matter to me. And I'm always being that way. I don't care yeah. how much money you have or, or how big you are, or how famous. Yeah. If you're in a good person and not good human, you will not get along with me. So I always right. look for that. So to have those relationships with, with those guys that are in the musical world makes my day. I mean, yeah. that, that to me, any, any of those uh, relationship that I have, or, you know, or, or, or a guy like, like Jeff Coleman, you know, that, you know, who's like a lost brother to me. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much in common we have with each other, you know, but yet we've been in, in two separate countries and now we're the best of friends because again, it's that magical thing that that magical connection. And that's what a treasure guys are, are like amazing players. Uh, or amazing guitar makers and makers, where it is, and they're my friends now. That's yeah. what I treasure. It's the relationships that I treasure. I get that. That's cool. Thank yeah. you for sharing that, man. No, no worries. How'd you get involved with licensing? Um, again, by mistake. <laughs> Meaning that's how that, a lot of people fall into licensing. Actually. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just it, it, as, as you can see a pattern in my life. It's always been. Because not not having a plan, I literally didn't have a plan, and that's the honest truth. It's not like I plan my life. Oh, I'm gonna do this, and I'm when I'm 22, 20 years old, I'm gonna move to the U.S. None of this, man. And then I'm gonna do no. I literally been like like falling apart, and I'm like, oh, sh I gotta do this. I gotta move this way. I gotta do that. <laughs> so so it's been a struggle. So with licensing, it was like that, you know. Hey Alex, you want to write this tune for me? It's for a McDonald's commercial. Oh, sure. Hi, you want to do this with me? Sure. And then you start building your life, and and that's exactly how I got into it. Yeah. Literally, people calling me. Hey, let's write something together, and do do do. And then all of a sudden, you're there. That's Very it. Cool. I mean, being in, being in the industry, that's how it is, or at least that's how it used to be, because nowadays you have to promote yourself more with the social media stuff. But, but, yeah. but a, a few years ago, that's how it used to be, you know? Oh, you know this guy? Yeah, let me recommend this guy for this. And, and, and I think a good this. percentage of it is the problem is the population of opportunities has shrunk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. It's that's an interesting story about, about that, how things have changed. So Eric Eric Johnson recommended me for a gig with this uh, Latin art. Um, not necessarily Latin. He's an Italian artist. Or, one of the biggest, if, if not the biggest guy in Italy, his name is Ed Ramos, Eros Ramasotti. Yeah, and, he, uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, what's her name was doing the gig for him for a long time? Um, Michael Landau was doing that gig for a while. No, a uh, woman. Oh, guitar uh, player or? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Um, anyway, I've had a couple of people on my show play. It, it could be because he usually calls the, you know, the, the, the guitar heroes, right? So Yeah. But just the fact that Eric called me and say, hey, I, I, they call me That's for this big, gig. He's the biggest art. He's massive. Yo, he's massive. So, yeah. but, so check this out. The funny thing, what I just said about, uh, you know, how you get recommended to gig, you would think – that if Eric Johnson is recommending a person, it's enough, right? Right. So apparently they went to, and I mean, and nothing against management, whatever they did, but it, it's the truth. It is that they tried to look for me on social media and they oh, couldn't find me. God. And that's why I didn't do the gig. True story. You know what? Management, I, whenever someone says to me, um, hey, even if I talk to the artist and say, hey, uh, can you go through management? 
I know, I always say, okay, and now I don't do it because I've spent so much. I have never made any head. It's almost like the, what is your job as a manager to like sabotage everything that, I, I mean, I, I'm like, it's really a weird thing. I, I don't understand it. Well, I, I think what it is, it, uh, one way to understand it is that those guys don't understand the 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 core of of what we do, meaning the how we feel, the music that we like to do, what other players might bring to what we do. They don't understand any of that. They they go at like, oh, is this gonna cost me this much? Are we gonna sell this much? But they look at numbers. That's it. They make decisions based on fear and numbers. Yeah. You know? You're, that's a good, that's a very good point. Yeah. And you yeah. know, cause the truth is how many, cause I have this conversation with like, I've had 900 people on my show. I've had this conversation with like 500 of them already. You know, the, the, how, what your social media profile, how many likes, followers, whatever is a mutually exclusive issue from your competency as a musician and your level of professionalism that you bring to the yeah. table. They have nothing to do with one another. Nothing oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, yeah, and you it's, know, it's strange. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. It, that's the kind of thing that is happening because nowadays, that's what it is. I mean, for good and bad. There's good things and bad things. But again, coming from the old way of doing things, you know, when you have, I mean, that's how I got the Holy Glasses gig or the other ones was because I got recommended by people who were, you know, the people would trust. And this yeah. case, Eric Johnson is recommending me for a gig that he, he, he cannot do. Then that should be enough, but it's not. Well, what makes no sense to Eris Hamazadi is a pop star. Do they, yeah. do they actually think it's going to matter who's playing guitar? This isn't like a guitar audience. Even. No, but but again, that maybe is the idiosyncrasy about artists. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they want they want to see the name, you know, and, yeah. and it's cool. Like I said, I don't judge them because it's they have the the, the you know the, the way of oh, doing it's their things. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's their right, and 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 yeah. you know, fine, you know. Yeah. But it, it it's something that happened. It's a situation that you can see how the business works nowadays. Yeah, totally yeah. nuts. Yep. Alex, tell me. What were some of the low points or dark periods you've had to deal with in life and how'd you get through them? Um, there's always, I just mentioned a few. I mean, uh, just the fact that I wouldn't say dark, but it's difficult to, as a kid, you know, as a 17 year old, not to have the, uh, not to have your parents you know, help or, or advice or just support, especially the support. It's hard, you know, and anybody. And, um, but, you yeah. know, it, it, that's always been the case for me, but you move on and you learn, you know, you, you, you basically understand that they did it because they thought it was the best thing to do. It's like, I, I tried not to be judgmental and, and, and in any case, just forgive that and, and move on. You could say that's, that's been a dark period. Um, of course, I just mentioned that I moved to the U S again, the dark period. And again, it's to, 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 you know, my friend's wife just passed away. Just that alone. It's, it's pretty traumatizing. And yeah. I, you know, and, and then, okay, now what? You have to rethink again. And so it's those moments where you think you're going like this, you're going up, you're going up, and all of a sudden you feel like you crash and you have yeah, to start. Yeah, uh, reset. So, so it, it's not necessarily dark, but super hard. Um, but, yeah, I, I say that. Um, and, and there were some in-between moments from maybe transitioning from one band, from one top 40 band to the other, that, uh, you know, you're struggling financially, basically, because, sure. you know, in the beginning, it's, it's like this. So it's, it's not like this. People think it's this way. It's like this. Yeah. Deep. I think anytime you you're go starting deep, a you new go high, business, you go deep. yeah, it's yeah. like that. So, and then you get level. I mean, it's still the, the music career. Now I always tell people, it's not that it's like this. Now it's like this. <laughs> the waves are just smaller. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's did, what it uh, is. Did did your folks did your dad turn around once you started once you came here and started experiencing success? He didn't have the opportunity. He died young. Oh, from he passed. Cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, I'm it's really okay. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm it's sorry, okay, man. That's terrible. Yeah, it's okay. 
Uh, it's life, right? Yeah, it's I life. know, but it's tough, man. Yeah, uh, it is. And I give you a lot of credit because the number one, the number one thing that successful musicians have in common by far is support from their parents. Yeah. Even absolutely. if there was like alcoholism, dysfunction, drugs, whatever, the number one, the, the parents push them. So I really give you credit because you had to overcome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I know this from yeah. talking to almost 900 people. You, you really had to overcome what was a hard, what, yeah, it's the and, fundamental and, oh, thing everybody had. Yeah. So pat yourself on the and back. And to be man, perfectly honest, I, I wish, I wish I had that. Of course. Uh, I wish. Yeah. I mean, if you ask me, did you wish that you had that support? And that, well, of course. Yeah. Who wants to be alone when yeah, you're 22? It was and very, like, uh, yeah. Exactly. I, I need to make a phone call to somebody. And usually it's like, you know, right. yeah, yeah. I, I feel you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So th good follow up question. That being said, which of your personality traits do you feel have contributed to your success? Um, uh, wrestling, I guess, just to keep doing what I do. And there's one thing I always tell people that it's, it, it's, I think it's important for any of us. Remember what I told you about what I thought I knew, what it was, yeah. meaning that, oh, I knew what how to play funk, and I did. That alone, because I've seen dear friends who I adore, in different, different, especially musical situations where you go, oh, I know how to do this, and, and they don't get the audition, and they don't do this. The one thing I see people doing all the time is they don't ask themselves if they were the problem to human beings tend to blame others for for other things you know you follow yeah. this I, I in do. my case to answer your question i think i'm willing to be wrong anytime i i uh, that i speak about anything you know it's very rare or you know or i i'll open myself to listen to you and i'll say but listen this is what i think what it is blah 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 but I'm, I, I don't think, I'm not, basically, I'm not one of those guys who will tell you, oh, you're wrong the first time. I would try to listen it and digest what you're saying and to give you my perspective and I'll say, this is what I think it is, but I could be wrong. Right, right, right. You know? well, I think that's an impo important thing. I'm, I'm actually like that myself because to me, if I can be accountable for what happened, Number one, I don't feel like a victim. Even if right. I screwed up, it's like, okay, that's on me. And then number two, I can f learn not to do it again. <laughs> so I always look for like, what what was my role in what happened here? Right. Because I hate being a victim, the most important. I don't want to be, right. you know, oh, I screw not. up. No, I screw never. up. I'm going to screw up yeah. many times in life. But um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah, we're all think done it, it, for, 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 but but again i think you know and, and very humble i said i'm, I'm willing to be wrong you know that, yeah. I, and i see it that pattern in myself like i in, in conversations I, i'm not going to be that guy to say yeah yeah this is how it is and you know like i will listen and try to say when it's my time you know, to say something i'll say i disagree i think it's what it is but then again i could be wrong you know but yeah like i i try not to impose myself and because of that, when you get to those situations where, why didn't I get the gig, you know, and, 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 and you go, oh, it's because my reading was not that great. Well, let me work on my reading. Oh, yeah. my, my rhythm playing was not that great. Well, let me work on my rhythm. Oh, I thought it was a, 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 a more of a funk player. I'm not. So let me learn more about that. So that, to be perfectly honest, that accelerated many things for me because you know, even even Dan, my friend, he's like he always told me, "Man, you're one of those guys that he used to tell me." Next, okay, he was into sports. He's like, "You're one of those guys that, you know, the basketball player, the guy, the most valuable player that he all of a sudden got really good." He used to tell me the terms that I forgot, but he used to like say that you know one of the things that I was doing then, and I I still try to do is to try to learn, try to be aware of what's going on and just make myself better as, as a musician, as a human being. Yeah. yeah. That's what I try, you know? So, That's awesome, man. I, I respect you know? that. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, let's talk about gear for a few minutes. What's your go-to sure. guitar 
right now? And what's uh, other two would round um, out your top three? Any, any, uh, right now I have a, like a Fiesta Red Sewer Strat. I'm a Strat guy. Let me just first I love that, Fiesta you know? Red, man. That's yeah, such a beautiful yeah. color. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, anything those guys makes, because it's, it's unbelievable. You know, it, you know, again, again, having the luxury of, of being part of the family, you know, I, obviously I endorse the guitars, but I, but I use them. And with, with, with my endorsements to me, I cultivated the friendship. Like some of them were friends. I mean, they're all, others like sure, they're literally family to me, but yeah. others that I use it, they're friends. Like sometimes people, they, they do all these endorsements, but I, I always, again, I was, if I was going to use something, it because it's because I truly value the instruments and I see the quality in it, you know, because you know, I never was one of those guys to, oh, let me try to get this guitar for free, you know? Right, and, right. And, and, and so anyway, to answer your question, this Fiesta Red Sword that I have, it's it's my go-to guitar. I mean, there's a, a few Gibsons that I use, of course, uh, but um, my main guitar is, is the Fiesta Red Sword, the latest Is one. that a regular three single coils or no again because of the nature of things that i do i i'm a big fan of the helm bucket because that allows me literally what you just said grab one guitar and do any gig so yeah it's like an hss yep yeah that's cool yeah exactly what would be uh second and third second and third have a 68 sg oh my god that wow i mean the reason <laughs> i play I, I actually went ahead and say okay i'm gonna play guitar it's because of angus yun of acdc uh-huh and it's the same guitar that he has it's the wow. same exact guitar and i just because of that it's it makes you know like i literally i remember my brother who's a very creative guy he actually did a fake guitar for me when I was doing some act in school back then. And guess what? He did an SG. I mean, the, the way he did it was pretty amazing. That's a whole other story, but super creative guy. And uh, basically, that's the guitar. And I always wanted a guitar like that. So I'm going to say that's my second. What, what kind um, of pickups are in that thing? The original ones. It's what's called T-Tops. Yeah. For, they, went, they went from PAF. You know the pad and the platform sticker to the T tops, so that's like late sixties. They have a different sound, but it's a really cool one. That they're still low output pickups, so you get the clarity, and you'd be surprised. Like a lot of people would associate because of ACDC on on the crunchiness and distorted thing, but you'd be surprised how many times I've used that guitar for clean sounds. No, I, I'm not because I had, and I'm I regret selling it sort of i had an sg that had 57 classics mm -hmm. and those pickups were like so nice yeah so nice you know they're kind of like pf style yeah i mean yeah. so i'm not i'm not surprised at all because you know yeah, yeah you roll down the the uh the, the you know roll off the, the tone and it sounds really clear yeah on that note talking about gibson's i think gibson is making pretty amazing guitars right now because one thing is that people and and it, it it's a fair comment that people say that they went down they went downhill a little bit on the quality and the stuff but i have to tell people that nowadays the stuff that gibson's doing is pretty remarkable i mean okay. they they got their stuff together and i have to say the stuff they're doing now it's pretty amazing that's so, great man. you know anybody that, that that that's looking for a gibson style guitar you know sg 335 any of those the stuff they're doing now is 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 pretty amazing but you know again you know for me as far as if you're looking for a strat type guitar a telly you know or even like a jazz master all the you know again even even you know a last ball sewer did this uh, limited edition of these uh last ball type guitar um that it was just incredible but it was a limited edition right yeah. so but again john being the guy that he is you know he's like okay let me and i'm sure i don't know if you heard this but this is pretty funny if you if, if you ask players about their gifts and guitars saying oh man that g string it's a pain 
Yeah, I have Gibson. Yeah. It, okay. It, you know, if, that, it's, right? if, if it's going to be out of tune. It's, yeah. Right. And you go to the G and so you go all oh, this and that. So all those little things, John fix everything. I mean, the, uh, the things you go, Oh, it, it, it's uncomfortable here that he fixed all those issues. And he did this guitar called the Aura, which is his, his wife's name. Beautiful person also who I adore is she's like a sister to me. And, um, but, but anyway, it, the fact is that he did that last ball that I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. You know, that's, that's, cool. that's, yeah. So, all right. Most embarrassing or funniest thing that's happened to you on stage or in studio. You know, it's always funny moments, but I'm going to, again, go back. I was playing <laughs> with this, <laughs> um, he he was like the the rock guy in Venezuela, right? So we're doing this popular TV show, very popular then. And before he was never caught in camera, but you could see my face. This is what happened. Basically, I'm backstage. You know, of course, it's I'm a kid. It's the '80s, you know, and I'm trying to do that that thing, the the, the guitar going around your your body. Right, so <laughs> I go like this, and the guitar goes flying. <laughs> <laughs> and then, why are you on? Why are you on TV? This is right before going on. Oh my god! But but and then so I went and, and the neck basically broke on the headstock. Broke again. It was a like an Ibanez guitar. It had one of those super thin necks then for the shreddy stuff, whatever. And and uh, it broke. So it's like, okay, time to go on. And you can see my face. I'm basically playing like this, like in the first few frets, because I'm holding the headstock not to fall apart. Oh, so you had a face. So I'm the like, whole thing. I'm like this. I'm like, oh man, what the hell's going on? You know, it's like it was very embarrassing. I mean, I felt embarrassed. I if I if I think of a moment, I have to say that one. So you didn't you couldn't play anything? No. But oh the good God. thing, I, again, we were lip syncing. You know, as many TV shows you do, but still, my face was priceless because it's like all serious. Yeah, you know, I usually have fun, whatever. I'm laughing, but this time it's like, oh man! And then, it, of course, I'm YouTube? thinking, I don't know. I, I will look for it. <laughs> if I find it, I'll send it to you. Send it to me. I want to see that. I, I promise. <laughs> I, I'm going to look for it, and if I find it, I'll send it to you. But Thanks. you can see my face. It's like, oh man, this guy is having a hard time, right? Because now, now I'm thinking. Oh, I have to repair this guitar. And, and again, being in Venezuela, there's not many repair guys here. Yeah, this, where do you go? And, and, and uh, what ended up happening really quick, what end, end up happening, it's that's how you learn. I order a neck, any neck. Back then, ESP was making necks uh, or parts, basically. We're a parts company then. And, and I got it, and I put the neck in, into that guitar. And it was a fatter neck. And then that guitar came alive. Oh, and cool. That's, that's when I learned necks are very important for the sound of your guitar. Yeah. So that's so a you, cool story. But, but anyway, that was embarrassing. And the moment was pretty embarrassing. So that was it. So you made lemonade out of lemons. Ultimately, I tried. That guitar. That's cool, <laughs> I tried. man. Yeah. Hey, give me your top three Desert Island discs just for this Ooh. moment. Hmm. I'm going to say uh, any of Eric Johnson's uh, record, because what I love about him, he encompasses a, a lot of different styles. So, and I love, I literally can sit down and listen to jazz, classical, rock, pop, anything at any given moment. So the fact that he incorporates all those styles, any of his records, so could be the one, let's just say his popular one, let's say Avia Musicum. Yeah, it's a great. One record. of them. Yeah. Um I wouldn't say uh, Miles Davis kind of blue as a staple. Mm -hmm. Um and who else? I'm gonna say um I'm thinking of a classical record that I listen to a lot. Um, there's, uh, 
I'm trying to remember. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what. I want to say night. I mean, it doesn't have to be a specific one, but the piece that I love the most is uh, one of the pieces I love most about classical music. It's uh, Night on a Bow Mountain by Mussorgsky. Night on a Mountain? Um, and A Night on a Bow, Bald Mountain. It's, okay. Uh, the first time I, I listened to that, I, I went with my mom as a kid to the movie theater, and it was, remember the movie Fantasia? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that because he was very dark and and, and you can almost say almost heavy metal like because he was dark overtones super low and it had this dum, 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 and then this devil came out of the mountain on the on the movie on Fantasia it was very aggressive so that piece of music it's always been it, you know it, it made a mark on myself so I always listen to that you know, regularly. So I'm going to say, yes, that, that night that. on a bald mountain by Masorsky. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. I've never heard that. Oh yeah. Please That's do. Cool. I will. So worth it. And it's beautiful because then it changes and the mountain gets calm. But basically it, it tells that uh, the tale is that at night, the, the, the mountain is bad and it's this evil thing. But then it, as soon as the day arrives, it becomes this beautiful thing now with the flowers and all that stuff coming up. So it makes all of that transition from the, day, the nighttime until the day. And you'll hear it in the music. It's That's wonderful. It's a bit of nostalgia for you, man. You're really uh, yeah, yeah. very animated describing that. Yeah, well, I try. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me about a change you've made, Alex, or an experience you had that changed your outlook on life or changed how you look at yourself. Mm. Uh, any of those moments I told you, basically, because, you know, as I'm always like I, when I look back, it's like when you tell these struggles to people. Um, Sometimes you'd be surprised how, how a few people cannot handle the situations and sometimes they cannot pass the moment and they stay there and sometimes they get dark, whatever. So, But the fact is that I've had all these situations in my life and I've been able to go forward and keep going with my life, you know, um, that change at that particular moment, any of those situations, um, it, it, it's... Uh, you know, when I look back, I, I'm, I'm proud that I continue doing what, what I what I do, what, what I still do in life, you know. Thank you. No, thank you. What do you like most about yourself? Probably that. What I, just uh, said. What I like, yes, that same. Your just, resilience. The, the resilience, that's it. I mean, again, when I look at it, when I think now, you know, much older, I'm like, I don't have the strength now. <laughs> Thank goodness I did it back then. Because to uh, think about all the stuff that I did mm -hmm. back then, all the suffering and struggles, it's like, man, I don't have that energy right now. Well, hopefully you, know? you don't have to figure it out if you have it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What do you think is the best decision you ever made? Coming to the U.S. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies outside of music? Uh, a few. Um, a few years ago, I used to fly radio radio control airplanes. I mean, and I always done it all my life, basically. Yeah. I wanted to be a pilot when I was a kid. Uh, that's one of them. But again, that takes time and and all this stuff. Nowadays, I think cooking it's my hobby. I take it pretty seriously. So, what do you cook, man? Uh, what do you like? What's that cook? again? What do you oh, like to every, cook? Every, well, my grandparents uh, from my mom's family, it, it's, it, I have this Italian side. And so I'm going to say Italian food first. Then I've done French. And uh, when the whole pandemic started with the COVID, uh -huh. you, know, uh, you know, you try to be creative. And I'm like, okay, I need to learn a new skill cooking-wise. I'm like, okay, Asian cooking. So I bought so you, myself a wok burner because you need a lot of power to cook with a wok. I mean, to truly cook Asian, 
you need that kind of power to cook with the wok. So if you do it in the, in the oven stove, I'm sorry, in the stove, it doesn't have enough power. So you really need a special thing, burner for the wok. And I bought a wok. And I've been training for the past two or three years now. And I'm an Asian food. Okay now. Uh, yeah, an Asian food. Yep. Do you have so, like a goats living outside on your property? Yeah, I have a patty that I can cook outside. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do because otherwise. No, no, goats. Goats. Oh, goats. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't. They use a lot. They, there's a lot mm-hmm. of goats. Oh, you got cut off. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of goats. They, they eat a lot of goats. I know, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, no. But I do uh, do curries and I do, you know, all the stir, stir fried stuff, rice, noodles, and all that stuff. Oh, dude, Pad you're thai. Me hungry. I know, I know. That's awesome. You know well, what? Also, you need, cook- you need to come down here and I'll cook for you. Come down to Weston? Yeah, I might do that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> please do. I love to cook for friends. That's, that's a hobby. I mean, the fact, and then when you realize that cooking is the same thing as playing music, it's about making people happy. That's the number one hobby musicians have cooking. Yeah. 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 Without a doubt. Cause they I, all I say can this, see it. You know, it's, it, it's like, a, you don't, you take a little bit of this, you take a little bit yeah. of that. And it's like, totally. you said, like making music, man. I hear totally that creative. As a matter of fact, you know, as a session player, you get called to do a job, a very specific job. And I have to say that cooking, it's always been my meditation. It's like a meditation, just the fact that I'm cutting everything the same size you get focus right yeah and then oh i'm gonna add this there's the 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 liberty of expression with cooking because again you're getting hired as a session player to do a certain job oh i love what you did in this record do that and then do this power chord and then so it's very specific and you oh yeah. i know what to do okay let me give you this it's like it will be the same thing as you tell me hey alex i just want fried rice from now on at some like six months from now i'm like man Greg, let me cook you something different, some <laughs> you know, some pasta, some sushi. I don't know, because f- fried rice, man. I'm tired of cooking the same <laughs> thing over and over. You know, yeah. It's the same. I get so it. cooking gives me that liberty of expression. You know? That's really wild. Italian, French, and Haitian food. Those are pretty like very specific yeah. specialties, man. Yeah. Well, you know, I. I I love to do research. Again, goes back to the whole yeah. magazine thing, reading a lot about it. I'm that guy. Oh, so I'm going to learn. And, you know, I will buy, you know, five, ten books of Asian, French, whatever. And I would read them, you know, like crazy and, and learn from it. And to add to that, the beautiful thing about my job as a touring musician, what is it that I do on the road? Eat. Go to the restaurants <laughs> and eat. And that gives you perspective. Again, going back to... Oh, I don't know how to play funk. Let me deal with the funk player so I know what funk is like. All right, let me go to France. Or oh, when I'm in France, let me go to the restaurant. They say it's the most authentic French bistro. And let me taste the food so I know what, when I cook French, what French food should taste like. Yeah, that's so, cool. What's, yeah. the, what's, the, uh, what's the favorite place you've traveled? France. Oh, it is France. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, it, 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 it's a, it's an interesting answer because I will say Italy, but uh, I think the French way of cooking is really interesting because the Italians, what they do, if you think about it, they don't do much to their food because they have so, so many beautiful ingredients that they don't, and that's the beauty of Italian cooking. They don't touch anything. It just added and it tastes unbelievable because it's about the ingredients. The French, on the other hand, have all this crappy stuff like, you know, the insides of the cow, whatever. <laughs> but yet they transform it and make it taste unbelievable. Because if, you, if, if you're afraid of all these things, if they don't tell you, oh, you're eating, I don't know, the stomach of the cow. Yeah. And But you're just eating or you eat, oh, you don't know, it's the tongue. Dude. You'd be surprised how, how how amazing it is, and I'm guilty of sometimes when people say, "Oh, it's this," I'm like, Ugh, "You shouldn't have told me what it is," you know. <laughs> but then again, it's amazing. But but yeah, France. This uh, I love Europe. The fact it's uh, in general. And if you ask me, a place it's difficult, but France because of the cooking, yeah, um, and the wines. Of <laughs> um, right but um, Europe, it's 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 just you know the old continent. You know, it's yeah. It's, 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 but, but then again, you know, 
so many beautiful places here when you mm. uh, being able to travel all over the US, you know, there's magical places here that you go to, you go, Oh my God, this is pretty unbelievable. You know, what's your favorite spot Canyon. here? Yeah. That's um, Grand Canyon is pretty unbelievable. Yeah. 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 What's the toughest decision you've had to make or the most difficult thing you've had to do? There's always many of them, you know, I always call them the small ones. You know, I, if I try to think about a big one, well, leaving everything behind my country, my family, everything for a new, uh, new dream, you know? Um, yeah, that was pretty tough, but, Again, that's always that's always been I guess my mantra. You know, a lot of tough decisions all along the way. Yeah. Because you you, you could say at the point that when my friend's wife passed away and he's like, okay, I'm going back. Could have say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna have to because yeah, I'm, this isn't happening. I, for me, I had yeah. this plan that I have to you know I was gonna follow and then it changed. Yeah. So so you know, are your brothers still in Venezuela? Yeah. They yeah, are. They're all. Do you, yeah. So do you go back often or once in a while? Not or? often, man, because of the political oh, situation. Of, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Biggest change in your personality over the last ten years, and how much of that change has been intentional, and how much is just a natural part of aging? There, I think there's a few understanding more about myself um, and, 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 and try to make those changes because like I told you, it's um, having to deal with this imposter syndrome. It's something that it's not healthy. You know, it, 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 it's a good thing because it pushes you to be hard on yourself and, and you, you strive for excellence anytime you do anything. But like anything in life, any extreme is bad, you know. So uh, to to know that about myself and to uh, say, okay, you have to deal with that because it, it, it maybe um, also being afraid of failure. Also, I, I will say, again, because I have to rely on myself, you know, when you go back to those things, um, uh, to accept more than we're all humans and we all make mistakes and there's no right or wrong. So, you know, to learn from that and to be able to say, okay, um, I want to do this stuff now, which in, th in this case, um, 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 I started to slowly, but surely working on, on, on an original record, you know, for okay. whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm just, again, I'm just letting it happen because, because it's my first, you know, it's a difficult process to learn with all that. So the change is to 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 accept myself more, and probably that's because of age. Although yeah. you could argue with some people never learned that lesson, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so maybe age is not a thing, you know. This, this it's is, a, some kind of a awakening, let's say, you know. So yeah, but you know, you, you, sometimes you you meet these people. Excuse me, and. Uh, my wife was just telling me she's a realtor and she had a client who was older in her seventies and she was like the devil, man. <laughs> I'm like, you know, you think you get to that age and you kind of realize, man, I really better start having fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, that being too. nice is a little, e a lot easier than being nasty, you know? And some yeah. people, like you just said, look at this, the, the, I don't know if, they just don't that they miss that. And I don't understand a hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Well, you know, you, I think the, the lesson here, I, I, it should be to, again, look at yourself in the mirror and see, always question things, always question yourself. Am yeah. I doing this right? I'm under, because that's the only way to go forward because not because you're successful. It means that you, you've been doing everything right. You know, uh, no, so, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so I know exactly I, what you're saying. Not sure. because I have this career. It means that I've been doing everything right. You know, no. And, and 
And the fact is that the more you ask those questions, and again, you can say, you know what, instead of doing X amount of sessions a day, let me just do a few less and let me just spend more time with my wife. Right. I have fun with her. You know what? Let me just drink that wine of glass tonight and enjoy just being alive, you know? Right. I know. That's, That's so it. important. It's yeah. so important to do. Totally. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you, man. It's so important. Yeah. And that it's important to find the things that bring you joy. And, and it's great having sessions. It's great being busy, whatever you do. But yeah, absolutely. Is that bringing you joy? Somewhat, yes, but not 100%. Yeah. So oh, absolutely. I, There's many things in life. Like I said, it goes back to the cooking thing. I mean, the fact is that I, you know, I see people trying this stuff and you go, have you tried that before? No. And that, that whole thing, it's pretty amazing. And the same thing. I go back and, and, and when I listen to music, I'll discover an artist and I will say, Hey, Craig, check this out to, to see your face, you know, that, Oh my God, that's unbelievable. That will be that will make my day, you know. Yeah, yeah. To have yeah. those exper those human experiences, it's it's that's what it's about, you know. Yeah, I agree with you. It's about connections, man. Yep, totally. Uh, just a couple of questions left. What's making you happiest right now, or or giving you the most excitement? Uh, to be working on my record. That's awesome. That, that, oh, yeah, okay. that, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes me very happy. I mean, like anything new in life or plans, it's gonna you're gonna get scared. And and but the thing is, it's a good thing to be scared because what happens is, and we don't realize this, that the co comfort zone is real. So if you don't pay attention to that, if you don't keep pushing yourself. And, and and okay, let me get out of my comfort zone and just do something that I. And it's gonna be scary. It's gonna be frightening and whatever. And you're gonna have to deal with your demons. Like, oh man, I'm doing this stuff. I have this imposter syndrome. I don't know how to do it. So all those things come into play. But you just have to keep going. You yeah. Know? And again, not not force it, but you get excited and scared at the same time doing those things. So this yeah. guy told me something a long time ago. It's a guy I worked for. And uh, I think he wasn't really a good boss or even a good human being, but I always listen. And he had something, one thing good to say. He said, without fear, there is no courage. Yep. So there you go. Amen Any, to that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Any final words of wisdom? Um, well, you know, just um, looking up all, all the stuff that we talked about, the one thing I could, final words of wisdom, I, I'm, I just said a few of them, just keep asking yourself the questions, keep doubting yourself, keep asking yourself if you're right or wrong, because you'd be surprised how many people out there are not asking themselves that question. And and sometimes they get stuck into this place about, oh, I'm right and you're wrong and you're wrong. And sometimes you get all this stuff and that's what things happen because you're not asking yourself, well, you have this opinion, but guess what? You might be wrong. Why don't you listen to the other person and just second guess yourself? It's healthy. I'm not saying that to doubt yourself because there are certain things that we know it's a fact. You know? But then again, think about this. Think about the universe. And so, oh, we have nine planets. Oh, the universe, it appeared this way because of the Big Bang. Now they said that might not be it. So that's my point about always ask yourself about what is it that you're doing that is right or wrong, or how can you be a better person or a better musician in this case, you know? Yeah. So that's, that. That's if, if, I, if you ask me something like that, that's what I'll say. Like, ask yourself, you know, doubt yourself and, and try to, to learn from you every day because every day is a new opportunity to be better, you know, and, and, and be better, you know, person that you are or that you were yesterday. Yeah, man. Well, I, yeah. I, I, one of the things and the reasons I do this show is to learn. And this has been really good because you talked about a lot of cool things that I, yeah, uh, well, that I need to like have I on said, the, on my... I've listened to the show, yeah. Craig, and it's, and I thank you for the opportunity, first of all, and, oh. and the fact that you're doing it, this for everyone else. We can learn so much. You yeah. know, it's like, again, listening to music. 
we learn by listening to others. Yeah, that's, that's... we learn from the masters, and yeah. and and you as an amazing person that you are, great <laughs> interviewer, you ask the, the good questions, and 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 then you have all this amazing guests with with you that can offer so much to learn from that. That's why it's like listening to a record, you know, <laughs> listening to pod to your podcast, listen to a record that you can learn from, you know, come on. So now you're messing with my imposter syndrome. <laughs> no, 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 come on. People need to transcribe your, <laughs> your podcast <laughs> so they can learn about that. You know, thank you so, so much. Let, I want to no, uh, tell people a few things you got going on. First of all, uh, follow Alex on Instagram. It's Alex Garcia, Alex Garcia guitar. Same thing with Facebook. Uh, Alex Garcia guitar and yep. uh, his website is Alex Garcia music. Yep. Few things. Number one, he is like available on a limited basis for guitar lessons. Best thing to do would be to message him through Instagram or Facebook and just let him know, Hey, what about what he does? Do you think, what are you interested in learning and why do you think he could help you? And and this way he can get back to you and let you know, yeah, it sounds like a, we should have a conversation. Uh, again, message him through Instagram or Facebook. Uh, same thing if you're looking for production help. He is pretty selective as far as that goes, but send him some tracks. Same thing. What are you interested in? Why do you think he could help you? What about his experience is going to add to you guys? And you have a project, uh, that a production project you just did that you were kind of excited about want to talk about that yeah i'm i'm actually producing this this guy um great guitar player the project's name is paris p-a-a-r-i-s mm -hmm. um it it's coming up soon i'm i'm looking forward to uh because it's a guitar player again you know and, and it it encloses the whole thing producing him being a guitar player and all the things again and that's helping me to okay maybe i should do that when i do my record you know production things and things like that. so i'm actually very, very excited to be working with him so look when will forward, that come out? look for that one i think it's going to be middle of the year right we're in the middle but we're in pre-production right now okay and the tunes are coming up great everything's coming in there are going to be great players doing you know doing the project so it's going to be a cool one so look forward to that one awesome so summer of fall of 2023 Yep. Yep. Um, man, thank you very much for everything. I really enjoyed talking. I knew you were going to no, be. Thank I knew you. you were going to be a lot of fun, man. Uh, every time I <laughs> yeah, talked to you, you, were, you had a good laugh. And uh, thanks. Oh, I wish you nothing but continued success. And thank when you, Alex's Craig. record comes out. He's going to come on here. We'll talk about oh, it. Oh yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you for that, Craig. Thank you. Hang on one second. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please share it on your social media channels. We appreciate your support. Thanks very much to Alex Garcia for spending time with us. Again, check him out at Alex Garcia Guitar on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in connecting with him on lessons or production, message him on one of those two formats. And his website is Alex Garcia Music. Uh, and most important, remember that happiness is a choice. So choose wisely. Be nice, go play your guitar, and have fun. Until next time, peace and love, everybody. I am out. Alex, thanks for everything, brother. Thanks, Craig. All the best. Take care.